Hey everyone, if you love gardening and butterflies, you are at the right place. And oh, do I have some fun things to show you today. If you're one of my regular viewers, y'all, I did a little bit of gardening without you. I'm so sorry, but I got super energetic yesterday and I just needed some gardening action. It's kind of cloudy today, so everything doesn't look as spectacular as it normally does when the Florida sunshine is shining at full steam. But look at the milkweed garden and my nectar gardens, all for butterflies. And I did a lot of things working with them and they are looking so much better. So in a moment, I'll show you everything that I did. But first, we have a few butterflies to go look at. You guys, look at all this gorgeousness. I had two eclos yesterday and three more eclos today. But I wanted you to see how perfect they are. Now, you all know I don't normally, <laughs> I don't, they look like they're all ready to go now, don't they? I don't normally raise monarchs, but I brought these eggs in for Hurricane Milton, and I'm just so pleased with how perfect they look. I was worried since it's the end of the season, you know, some of them might be closed with significant OE damage. Because in Florida, like 90% of them are positive for OE. So they just all seem to have it, but oh my goodness. All right, maybe I will start setting these guys free because they look like they want to fly. Look, I've got one trying to escape. Let's get you right now. No! <laughs> one of them did escape. When they get out like that, they go right down to this corner because they like to go to the light, which is why I have my handy dandy butterfly net. Yeah. We're just going to walk real slowly. I love it when they land and we can come and see them up close. Look at him digging into his first nectar. How beautiful is that? And they do love porterweed. Look at him go at it. Oh my goodness, he's perfection. All right, I'm going to go get some warm. Okay, so the two I released, I think, are the ones that he closed yesterday because they were the most active in the enclosure. So I'm going to leave these guys in a little longer because there's three left and these ones... I do believe it closed this morning. I also have a polydomus swallowtail. You know, they're my favorites. I keep releasing them and I keep checking for eggs. I mean, one day I'm going to go out there and there's going to be eggs. Come here, come here, beautiful. I got you. I got you. I know. You want to fly. There you go. Look at this beauty. I love their colors. The orange and brown with the red and yellow markings on the wings. I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, there we go. And lastly, I have a little Atala. When I put my hand in the enclosure, this little one literally jumped onto my hand. It was like it knew. There we go. 
And you guys know that raising and releasing butterflies in my garden is fabulous and I love it. But only raise a few. <laughs> At least I'd try. They're just so adorable as caterpillars. I just want to bring them all in. But the main focus of my channel is how to get the right plants in your garden so the butterflies can live and thrive naturally in the space that you create for them. So let's go look and see what I've done and I did a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Okay, I redid my workspace over the weekend. Um, but yesterday I did a bunch of stuff out here. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous. You know, you know how I said I wasn't feeling well. Well, when I have those events happen with the Meniere's and the migraine and all that, it's like my body says, you, girl, you got to go sleep so we can heal this. And I listen to it because I can't do anything else. But then as soon as like everything's all taken care of, it's like, boom, I get my energy back. And that happened yesterday about three in the afternoon. And y'all, I was on it in my garden. Okay, let's go. First of all, I wasn't happy with how scrappy looking my milkweed garden was. This is swamp milkweed and, and um, aquatic milkweed in this area. Host plant to monarch butterflies and queen butterflies. Those are the butterflies that I get. And it's looking scrappy because normally swamp milkweed does look scrappy at this time of year. But I had two recent videos on it and I thought, man, people are probably like, what is up with this girl's garden? It looks terrible. And here she is talking all about it. But it's just how it is. However, I did place an order with Joyful Butterfly and I got some beautiful, not scrappy looking swamp milkweed and aquatic milkweed in. And I did a test plant a few videos ago and my test plants did well over a few days. So I decided to put more in and it makes it look so much better. And I had two pots with the water hyssop. That's this little plant down here. Let's get in close. It gets these adorable little flowers on them. Right now, there's not a lot of flowers because it's recovering from me moving it. These were in hanging baskets and I moved them all here to my swamp milkweed garden and my aquatic milkweed garden because they love a wet, moist, water wetland setting. And so does the swamp milkweed. All of this whole garden is set up as a wetland garden. I dug it all out and put pond liner in and then refilled it in. So the soil stays very damp and these plants all love it, which is why I have them here. The water hyssop is a host plant to the white peacock. And then, like I said, the swamp and the aquatic are for monarchs. So this whole garden area supports three varieties of butterflies, plus the flowers. Currently, the aquatic milkweed is blooming. Look how gorgeous it is. And pollinators love this. Butterflies love these flowers. So they support other pollinators as well. So that's just one section of my backyard that's devoted to butterflies and pollinators. And then across the back of it, I moved some of my potted plants out of my container garden just to get some more color and flowers in this area and blooms because it was just looking pretty sad. And then, you know what makes everything better? Pine bark, that's right. I got some fresh pine bark and I just put it in this spot and it just really oh, brought everything in and I love it. So let me go show you what I did to my container garden where those came from. When I cleaned up my workspace, 
which you can kind of see back in the background, there was a giant piece of border grass that came out here and went that, that way. And I took it out which enabled me to pull this fence post up even with the other one. See, they kind of end in the same line before that one ended back there. And there's a big chunk of border grass there. I took that border grass and I divided it and I ran it along my little cobblestone walkway I put in a few videos ago. There used to be the potted plants. They were just right there where that border grass is. And then I brought my raised planters up closer to the border grass and they're more in a straight line, but it gives me better access to them. And right now things aren't really blooming in them that much. So I want to get some more actually flowering things to put in there. Look at that. Look at my <laughs> marigolds. They're just like, they're just loving life right now. And then I just kind of moved everything in. All my taller potted things are more towards the center. And the back is a little empty right now, but I have ideas. See, I didn't do it all without you. I just did some. But I really like the look of the border grass. You know me, I like borders and defined edges. And so now this whole garden either has the little mini wall or border grass all the way around. And the intention is for it to be filled with flowers. Although the potted things in here are flowers, they're just not blooming right now. And then in here, in between and in amongst all these plants were some pentas that were actually in the ground and they weren't doing very well because they were crowded with all of these pots. So I dug all of those up and I moved them down here to this new garden space I created several videos ago. They're not looking pretty, but there's one, two, three, four pentas that were down there and they will get great sunlight here even though they're not today because it's very overcast today and they'll grow in and once um they settle in and get their roots established i'll trim them back a little bit so they'll push out new growth but when those get big and full they're going to be gorgeous here so as you can see over there i still have a lot of pine bark that i'm going to fill in and just freshen up all of my walkways which again will just help this garden pull together even more <laughs> and i wish this was a prettier day i wish the sun was shining but you know we can't always get what we want can we oh and um where i took the water hyssop out of the hanging baskets I had some corky stem passion vine growing in pots and uh, you can see it all suffered through Hurricane Milton but I put it in here because I thought well it'll be beautiful when it really grows in and it can just all hang down from the basket and I also left some straggler water hyssops in here they'll grow in also. And then right next door, I had some Dutchman's Pipe Vine, which really wasn't thriving in the hanging baskets, but I had these verbena plants that I had just picked up at Lowe's a few videos ago. And I thought, well, man, those will make really, really pretty hanging baskets. And the color of the verbena goes really well with the porter weed that's behind it. And the the butterfly pea so it's all like purpley blues back here the the pipe vine that was in here i just moved into these containers right below and just filled them in a little bit more so we're ready polydama swallowtails every day i come out here and i look to see if there's eggs, but I haven't found any. Polydomus was uh, that 
was it the last one I released? One of the butterflies I released earlier in this video. And this is their host plant, Wooly Dutchman's Pipe Vine. The Corky Stem Passion Vine that I put in these hanging baskets is a host plant to the Golf Fritillary Butterfly and the Zebra Longwing Butterfly. Now I'll take you back and show you a little bit of my workspace. It is not done, but I'll show you what I've done so far. And you know what, you guys? I think I'm going to try and get this video up tonight for you because I don't know. I feel like tonight we need, we're going to need some butterflies and gardening in our lives. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Okay, let me go show you my workspace and we'll go from there. First thing, this is my secret walkway where I can walk the plank. It was only two planks wide. Now it is three planks wide because I moved this whole concrete cinder block wood fixture that I made out this way more. So it actually made my garden workspace smaller, but I'm okay with that. Then, look what I did, y'all. I love this. So I put a couple of blocks there and there as risers, and I put some of my potted wild limes on them. So this whole section is potted wild limes. And what I love about it is I can walk through here and check them for caterpillar eggs, Wild lime is the host plant to the giant swallowtail, my second favorite caterpillar to raise. And they also are covered in thorns, so they get you. But I have enough room to walk by and check them where I don't have to be right up close to them and have them catch me with their little thorns. On the other side, I still have my swamp milkweed that I planted in containers that don't drain so that they can grow and thrive back here and then I have my pipe vine so are y'all ready for this are you ready this little area right here is the beginnings of the caterpillar cove that's right we lost the maypop mansion from hurricane milton but we got the caterpillar cove. My favorites. Pipe vine, polydomus swallowtail, wild lime, giant swallowtail. My favorite caterpillars. Love the monarchs. They're going to stay out here because I'm not bringing them in and raising them. But it's just a little protected place for them to be. And normally you won't see these containers from the other side of the garden but since i trimmed back all of my pentas that were in here because of hurricane milton you can see through but this is all that is going to grow in and when you're on the other side of this garden area you will not see these big white plastic pots and then the milkweed will hopefully be taller but look it's it's growing in Look at that. Look how cute it all is coming up. I love it. More milkweed for monarchs. So what do y'all think? Caterpillar Cove. It's pretty cute, isn't it? I can get some other host plants back in here too. And like my little walkway, I'll be surrounded by caterpillars, except I probably won't. <laughs> so I'll probably take all the giant swallowtail caterpillars in and the pipe vine. Well, not all the pipe vine because there's too many, but anyway i love it okay let's go see what's on the other side of this and my workspace okay so when we come just around here this is all open now and i've got some of my pentas that i'm growing for the nectary here i've got them all over the place in my garden that's going to be my new potting area where I've got the potting tree house. Um, we took the, the um, what do you call it? The, it's a fence. No, the border. No, the, what do you, 
<laughs> you know, the pieces of wood that made a boundary, <laughs> like those, <laughs> we took them down. And I can stand right here and pot things. And I've already look, I've already been doing it and I love it. Got my potting soil stacked right here. And I, I love how that's working. Over here, I'm in the process of organizing my pots by size and shape. Our neighbor dog's saying hi, if you can hear it barking in the background. And then this is my mess. I still need to clean up. But eventually I'm going to like sort through all of these pots and get them more organized, which mostly they are, but they're just going to be like stood up and more accessible. And then, like I said a few videos ago, I want to turn a lot of this into more garden area. I also have some of my potted trees back here. These are um, wild black cherry trees that are in the process of going dormant because they do. And why that one is less dormant than these two, I don't know. And this is a pawpaw tree that has already gone dormant. And y'all remember when I redid this whole thing and how much I loved it. And then Hurricane Milton came through and destroyed it. And now I've got it all done again. And do you not know there's some other storm out there? But it's not coming my way. But I mean, I just feel for the people who it is heading for. Because we have been through it here. And these hurricanes, somebody just needs to turn that switch off for a little bit. Like, just give us a little bit of a break. It's November. It's November. Nobody wants a hurricane in November. Nobody wants a hurricane ever. But November? No. No, no, no. Look, I think that's one of the monarchs I just released on my Budlia. Do you see this wind? Oh my goodness, look at that baby hanging on. What is the deal with this wind today? I don't like it. But I love that Budlia. That's that Black Knight one. And I bought the new one, but I think it's a different type. I want to get another of those Black Knight because the butterflies really, really, really just love that. I got that one down at Peterson's Nursery. This, this is a different monarch because this one's laying eggs. <laughs> this is not one of the ones I just released, but... Oh yeah, you can tell us wings are a little bit older. Um, that's funny that this is happening right now because yesterday when I was planting these, like immediately uh, there was a female out laying eggs on them. So in Florida, we have monarchs year round and they need a place to lay their eggs. So the actually the Sclepius perennis is the aquatic milkweed. That's the one to have because it doesn't go dormant. And these um, swamp milkweeds, Asclepius incarnata, are likely to go dormant. So if you can get your hands on some aquatic milkweed and you're in Florida, get some and get it in a wet setting. Plant it in a pot that doesn't have drain holes. All these pots don't have drain holes and that's what they love they love they want to be in the swamp it's called aquatic milkweed and swamp milkweed for a reason look how beautiful and like i said they love the nectar on this milkweed too while we're looking at this beautiful monarch butterfly if you're enjoying this video tap the like button and you know I told you on my last video to subscribe and get me off of 38 well I'm still on 38 so apparently all of you are already subscribers so now you all have to go find a gardening friend 
that doesn't know about my channel and make them subscribe. Don't make them subscribe if they're not going to watch. I only want people who are going to watch to subscribe. But get me off that number 38. Do you see that? Look at that wasp there. It's probably looking for that egg. Hey, get out of there. <laughs> Probably looking for those eggs that this little one's laying. So what's coming up on my channel? My new obelisk trellises arrived. I still have to build them. And I'm going to put together that section of the garden down there that I keep showing you <laughs> with those new plants. And I'm so excited to get that going. So hopefully later at the end of this week, you will see that video. So stay tuned. Tap the subscribe button. Tap the like button. Open the description section of my video to check out all the information I have there, including what this video is about, the link to my Amazon storefront, the affiliate link to Joyful Butterfly, and best of all, you can find out how to join my channel and become a channel member and get access to even more butterfly gardening content. And on that note, I will bid you farewell and I will see you in the next video. Say hi to me in the comments. And if this video made you smile at least once, give me at least a smile emoji in the comments and tap the like button. All right, bye.